Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Welcome to the world of terrifying imagination. The fear you can hear. This is the story of a natural-born loser. Within the quietest and most retiring of the genus Homo sapiens, there lurks a tiger. As indeed, it lurks in all of us. It takes only the right combination of intolerable pressures, unfulfilled dreams, and the opportunity to escape the first and realize the second to make even the worm turn. Which is just what happened to Henry Green. I do a lot of dreaming. When you're married to someone like Florence, you've got to do something. But I never figured any of those dreams to come true. Revenge dreams, you know, like... It is the decision of this court that you, Florence Green, be removed to a suitable place and hang by the neck until you are dead. Maybe it's hung... I never remember, like, it's all right, Jack Willoughby. I know you did your best to pull her through, but it's God's will that prevails in the end. Florence is gone forever. Someone yaks at you like Florence and steps on your toes everything you want to do and has to be on you every moment and won't let you out of the house alone. I'm telling you, it's simply murder. So I dream a lot about my wife just not being. But I never thought of actually causing her not to be. I never really meant to end up a murderer. Our mystery drama, It's Simply Murder was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Ian Martin and stars Jack Guilford. I'll be back shortly with Act One. One of the simplest and most fiendish devices to drive men mad is the Chinese water torture. The slow drip of water, second by second, minute by minute, hour by hour on the forehead. Unending, inescapable, inexorable. Henry Green's life was like that, both in his work and at home. Did you wash up all your breakfast dishes? Yes, Florence. You let the spoons up so they drain? Yes. Put out the garbage? Yes. And you cleaned out the sink? Yes, Florence. You wrung out the sponge? Yes, look, I just... Don't you move until I'm finished talking to you. Now, look, I want you right straight home here after the bank closes tonight. Well, some of the boys... Oh, don't give me any, uh, some of the boys. But just a drink to say bon voyage. But you'll have all the bon voyage on the cruise when we leave tomorrow. Although, don't think there'll be any drinking going on there either. There's enough money being spent on this vacation now. It's the first real vacation we've taken since our honeymoon. And we wouldn't and be having it if I hadn't made you save for it. I didn't start saving the money for the cruise. I, I... know, I know. You wanted to save it for a smelly, dangerous, noisy old motorcycle. Well, I wasn't having any of that. I, I always wanted one. All my life... Oh, stop I... it. You're too old for one now anyway. How do you know what I... What was that? I, I, I said, now, do you know that I've, I've got to leave or I'll be late for the bank? Well, don't forget to pick up the suitcase. What suitcase? Your old one that Travis' luggage is repairing. Oh, all right. And mine to come right home after... Watch out for the cat! <laughs> Ouch! You clumsy fool, you stepped on him. I didn't. He tried to run out of the door and he bit me. Serves you right. He knows you don't like him. <laughs> Once I left the house, I always tried to put Florence out of my mind. And the best way to do that was to think about Sherry Woods. Not that I could do any more than think about her, because she was Mr. Mercer's day and night, if you know what I mean. But more and more, I guess I was getting to the dangerous age, because I sure did a lot of thinking about Sherry. 
Well, that's 10, 20, 30, 35, 40, 45, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, next 50. Thank you, Mr. Robinson. Uh, See you next week. You haven't any more customers, Henry. Close your window. Why, Sherry, Mr. Mercer wants to see me? I want to see you. Meet me in the conference room. Of course, if you say so, but what's wrong? Everything, as far as we're concerned. Unless maybe we have the nerve to try to put it right. Anyway, it's something we can't talk over here. Meet me where I sat. What kept you so long? Uh, Mr. Mercer, he stopped me. You still think I'm attractive? Well, Sherry, knowing how I felt for you all this time, you have to ask? Yeah, I want to be quite sure. Come here, Henry. Where? Here. Right close against me. Put your arms around me. Well, su- suppose someone should come in. I slipped the automatic lock on the door before you came in. We're quite I, safe. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't feel that way. I meant from being interrupted. Now kiss me. Sherry, I'm a married man. Oh, don't tell me you don't want to. Sherry, you, you could make me do anything but... Oh, make me do anything. Mm, All right. All right, that's enough. Oh, I I never kissed anyone like this. It's a good thing. You'd be arrested. It'd be worth it. Let's do it again. Well, we could do it forever. If you wanted to. But I'm married. We could make a few changes. Henry, when you get back from your trip, are you still expected to be... Promoted. Well, I... Mr. Mercer has practically promised me... Don't forget Sam Mercer's promises. I ought to know how little they're worth. We, my darling, are out. My darling? Did you hear the other part? What do you mean, we're out? You know in your heart, you'll never be vice president. And I've been fired. He can't do that to you. Well, he already has. You mean, Mr. Mercer has, uh... uh Changed his affections? I mean, that lousy, pot-bellied little two-timer has gone right off the deep end for Miss Fancy Pants. Gosh, Sherry, I am sorry. If there's anything I can do... Henry, love, there's plenty you can do to help. You and me are going to be rich. Together. You'd like that, wouldn't you? Look, I... I better get back to my cage. Is that where you think you belong? Well, I am head teller and... In a cage? Oh, you're a man, not a mouse. Now's the time for you to prove it. Grab the world by the tail. How'd you like to travel the world, live like royalty, never have to punch a time clock, get away from handling other people's money, have it be your own? Both of us. Just you and me. Just, uh, but, uh, us? But, 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 Sherry, I mean, if, even if, if there wasn't Florence, I don't have any money. She's got it all. Oh, then that settles it. I'm going to remake your life. How? Oh. Well, why don't we have lunch together, and I'll tell you. Where? The sandwich shop? No. Let's make it the gourmet. At 12.30? But that's terribly expensive. Oh, Henry, love, that's the way you and me are going from here on in. If you go along with me. You know, I want to, but... But how? I'll tell you that. After the second martini. I don't think I've ever had two martinis in a row. Certainly not in the middle of the day. Well, that's the whole trouble with you, Henry. You haven't really lived. That's because I haven't wanted to. Well, if you really want, you gotta take. I guess we both learned that today. We sure did. The boat sailed for both of us. Yeah, well, there's another boat sailing tomorrow that I'm more interested in. It's the one I wish I was taking with you. Oh, but what could I do with Florence? Yeah, well, that's what we're going to discuss. We are? Mm. The best way to get rid of your wife. 
It's what we both want, isn't it? Florence would never give me a divorce. And even if she did, she'd want a big alimony. And I, I just couldn't afford you, Sherry. Well, I won't deny I'm expensive. But you could easily afford me. How? Cy Mercer and his new lady love are leaving early for a weekend in Bermuda. Monday's a holiday. They won't be back till Tuesday morning. It won't be till then that they discover the money is missing. What money? The money in the teller's drawers. How much do you think it adds up to? Well, it's the end of the month. Payday for most people. The deposits have been heavy, somewhere between six or seven hundred thousand dollars. Why? No. What do you want to know? I just wanted to know how much we're going to steal. Shh. It's all right, dear. No one's listening to us. I'm not listening to you. You must be mad. Steal it for what? For us to enjoy the rest of our life together. Together? What about Florence? Yeah. What about Florence? I just can't wish her dead, you know. Well, I don't see why not. You, you mean kill her? How many times have you wanted to? Almost every day. Of... <laughs> But that's different. I, I would never do anything about it. Not even for me. It, it, it isn't that. I. I, I wouldn't know how. Anyway, it's all impossible. Why? But it takes two keys to close and open the teller's vault. Mine and Mr. Mercer's. Oh, you mean this one? How did you... Well, I told you he was leaving early. He gave me his key to close the vault tonight with Mr. Schaefer. But Schaefer doesn't have the other key. I have. Yeah. But Shai thinks Schaefer's going to have it because he's instructed me to tell you to give it to Schaefer and tell him we'd be locking up while you're gone. So we have full access to the money. Yeah, until the outer door is closed with the time lock. And then the vault can't be opened until Tuesday. But I'd be trapped on the ship out at sea and then Henry, I... Henry, after you've taken the money, you never get on that ship. Ah, I've always wanted to take a cruise, and Florence There wouldn't... There isn't going to be any Florence, Henry. Remember? But where could we hide? With enough money, you can hide anywhere. You'd shave off your mustache, get contacts instead of those uh, wire-rimmed glasses, a, a mod wig. I'd cut my hair short, dye it blonde, and get a nose bob, and put on a little weight in the... Right places. We'd be new people. Mm, I always wanted to have a beard. So, all right. Grow a beard. Florence would never let me. Listen, Florence won't be around to object. Would I really have to... to kill her? Mm, what other way around is there? None. The trouble is, I wouldn't know how. Well, I've thought of that, Henry. Here. What is it? It's a bottle of sleeping pills. Just dissolve them in a nice hot cup of tea for Florence. What more do you want? I... I think I'll have another martini. I couldn't believe it was me sitting at an expensive restaurant, drinking in the middle of the day, and planning to murder my wife. Then I started in to think about the 20 years I'd already had with Florence and the 20 or more I still might have to spend with her. And killing Florence began to make sense, maybe. I stole a look at Sherry, who was powdering her nose. It looked pretty good to me like it was, and I, I didn't see where she didn't have enough in all the right places to start with. That's when I made up my mind. Florence had to go. Henry Green, 5'9", 148 pounds, mouse-haired, mild, 45 years old, and safely mounted on a treadmill, running day by day to stand in the same place. A man in a cage, both at work and at home, but now in the grip of the mating urge, a tiger. 
I'll be back shortly with Act Two. There's one thing you can say for Henry Green. Once set loose, there's nothing small about his new way of life. Within one day, he is all set to break three of the major commandments. The sixth, seventh, and eighth. Although not necessarily in that order. Murder and adultery will have to wait their turn. At the moment, he is occupied with the eighth. And grand larceny at that. All right, Sherry. That was the last teller. Is she gone? Yeah. All right. Let's open up. There. That's mine. Now yours. That does it. Now get the suitcase from behind the desk while I open the vault. Here it is, Henry. Put it flat on the floor and open it. You hand me the money, and I'll pack it in. Hope there's enough room for all of it. Just take our big bills and leave the chicken feed. No. Better take everything. Empty drawers are easier to handle. What is it? Somebody's coming. Hide the suitcase. Get the vault door. Give me the bag. Oh, well, all closed up, Miss Woods. A time to go. Why, Miss... Burpee. But forget something? Oh, and Mr. Green, uh, honest, I'm just so embarrassed. I, I sure hate to ask you, but... But what? Well, well there, there's something I want to check in my teller's drawer. Would you please open up the vault? Uh, what? Yeah, but, but we just closed up. We can't... Oh, you got to. I, I have to know if it's missing. Is what missing? My engagement ring. You see, I, I usually take it off and put it in the drawer till I go home and... Tonight, I forgot to take it out. Well, uh, can it wait till Monday? Oh, we're all. Uh, well, Tuesday. Oh, no, no, I, I got dates with Horace over the weekend, and oh, you'd have a fit if I wasn't wearing it. Besides, I, I've got to be sure if it is there. Uh-huh, well, maybe you put it in your handbag. Oh, no, no, I looked there first thing because... Oh, now I remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right here in my jacket pocket. Oh, oh gee, I'm sorry. Oh, I... oh, 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 that's <laughs> all right. Well, I, I I guess I'll be getting along home. Oh, oh sorry, I didn't see the suitcase. I, I, I was uh, having the handle fixed before I, I packed it to uh, to go on my vacation. Oh, gosh, you don't have to explain to me. I didn't think you were robbing the bank or nothing. Uh, well, well, I, I, I got to run. Well, one of the other girls is waiting for me. Just let me make sure she's gone. And for God's sakes, let's pack up and get out of here. We were both shaking like we had a fever after that running with bird brain burping. But somehow we managed to pack the money in the back and close the outside door with a time lock. Going home in the cab, the tension was so bad I was tempted to take one of the sleeping pills myself to calm me down, but but I resisted that. One crime leads to another. I was committed. If I lost my wits now, I stood to lose everything. Well, it's about time you got home. I had to close up the bank. Uh, at least I see you remember to bring the suitcase. I'll take that. No. Huh? I, I, I mean, I'll do my own packing. <laughs> you? You can't even fold a bath towel. Well, this time I'll show you. I want you to get a little rest, dear. I'll take care of myself. No, oh, I'm not going to argue. Go ahead. Throw everything in. Higgledy-piggledy. You've been drinking. Well, I... Just the sort of party because... I hope you didn't get too giddy so you can't manage to take your dinner out of the oven. Where are you going? Over to Mama's to leave Pussy. She's going to take care of him until we get back. Oh. Okay. Will you be long? I don't know. Why? I'm all packed. I have no problems. I, I just thought you might be tired, Florence, dear, and I, I want to get to bed early. I'm not even thinking about bed. And you'd better not either. 
We got a lot to do before tomorrow. But don't I know it, Florence? Don't you worry. I'll, I'll be awake. <laughs> Sherry? Yeah? What's happened? Oh, nothing yet. I just had dinner. You mean to tell me you haven't got rid of Florence? Oh, yes. How? Well, she just uh, took the cat over to leave at her mother's. Oh, you know that isn't what I meant. I, I, I know. It's just I, I'm... Sherry, I, I, I don't know. Henry Green, you listen to me. It's now or never. But I don't know how to... Look, can you take those capsules? Empty the powder from them into a cup or mug or whatever, and coax Florence into having a nice relaxing drink before bed. What does she like? Uh, a chocolate, but... No buts, Henry. You can do it. Just put your mind to it and finish it. I'm just it. sorry I ever started it. Oh, Henry. When you know you're going to end up with me. Oh, okay. okay, Sherry. You can trust me. <laughs> of shots from the Christmas brandy bottle Florence kept hidden in among her foundation garments to keep me going till Florence got back from her mother's. Luckily, by that time, she seemed tired herself and we were finally ready for bed. Uh, did you lock the front door and put out the lights? Florence, uh, how'd you like a, a nice cup of cocoa before you go to bed? Put you right off to sleep. <sighs> oh, I'd love it. I, I, I'll, I'll get it for you. You can't. I used up the last yesterday. But you got it. You, I'm, I mean, wouldn't you like something to drink? Oh, well, I, I did get a little bit of a chill coming home. I'll, I'll take some hot tea. Oh, yes, yes. I, I Hot tea will be just right. <laughs> Here's your tea, Florence. Now drink it up. In a minute, when I have my hair up. Meanwhile, I have a list of things for you to do. Me? Yes. I want you to put out the mm. garbage, check all the outside door locks, bleed the hot water tank and make sure there's no rust, oil the garage doors, replace that burned-out bulb on the basement stairs. Well, here, here, it's all listed. But this'll take hours. Just do as I say. Mm. I don't care most of this way till we get back. No. Why not? I'll tell you when you're finished. Now, on you go. Oh, don't look so pouty. It's something to keep you busy till I'm ready to go to sleep. Yeah. Okay, Florence. Good idea. Something to keep me busy till... Goodbye, Florence. What'd you say? Uh, nothing. Just goodbye. Florence? What is it? Oh, my God. What is it, Henry? I, I, no, nothing. I, 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 I just thought you were asleep. No, I just, I just can't relax somehow. Too many things on my mind. What was it you were going to tell me? Oh, that can wait. Oh, I wish I could sleep. Didn't, uh, uh, wasn't the tea any help? Oh, that. I poured it out. You forgot the sugar. Poured it out? I yelled and yelled for you, but you didn't answer. I must have been outside. Anyway, it tasted terrible and it was cold, so I, I just poured it down the sink. Well, uh, how'd you like to bring me another? But with sugar. It's too late. Why? It's only just after uh, 10 o'clock. Uh, yes, I um, I guess I, I'm so, oh, I'm so, I'm so tired. Uh, okay, Florence, I'll get you another cup. Yes. Now, what do I do? There's got to be a way. How? Tell me. I haven't got a gun. I wouldn't know how to use a knife. We haven't got a rope in the house. There isn't even any string. And I haven't got the courage to even consider a, a blunt weapon. Oh, why did I ever get into this? Well, look, if you had a razor, couldn't you? A razor? I don't even use a safety razor because blood makes me nauseous. Just electric. That's it. Electricity. Take out a fuse and... I wouldn't go near the fuse box. I'd probably electrocute myself. Gas. Have you got a gas stove? Oh, great. 
All I have to do is say, Florence, I just robbed the bank because I'm in love with Sherry Woods and we need you out of the way, so would you please just stick your head in the unlighted oven so I can smother you? What's that? The tea kettle. Blowing the whistle on me. I guess it's only the first. Wait a minute. Smother. A pillow. Oh, Henry, that's it. A pillow. A what? You know, like Laurence Olivier in that picture where he had the, oh, the black face and he held the pillow over his wife's face and then, uh, it was by Shakespeare. Oh, yeah, Othello. Yeah, yeah. I might just be able to manage that. <laughs> Tea was too weak, but at least it had sugar. Henry, Henry, what are you doing standing there with that pillow? Oh, nothing. Just waiting to come to bed. Uh, Well, turn out the light, for heaven's sake. I'm almost asleep. Henry! Yeah, sure. Uh, Henry, what are you doing with the pillow? Come on, it's late. What's... uh, Who's that? I don't know. Turn on the light so I can answer it. I don't know what's wrong with you. You had that pillow right over my face. Hello? Oh, oh, Mama. Yeah, what's the matter? Oh, just a minute. Henry, will you get that pillow out of the way so I can talk to my mother? Yeah. Oh, yeah, Mama. Yeah. Hmm? Oh, pussy wouldn't take his milk. Well, I can't understand. Oh, Mama, I forgot to tell you. Put a teaspoon of sugar in it. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, he's used to it. Oh, no. No, Mama, you're not interrupting anything. I got all the time in the world. Hmm? Oh, well, yes, he, he doesn't like his litter basket in the bathroom. Uh, unless there's a problem. I lay there listening to the voice droning on and on, the pillow in my hands, waiting for the moment, the moment that never came. Three martinis, two brandies caught up with me. And the next thing I knew... You fell asleep. Sherry, I was bushed. I was just knocked out. And when Florence starts talking to her mother, you just don't know. Oh, never mind that now, Henry. What are we going to do? I don't know. Is Florence still in bed? No, she got up before me. She's in the bathroom. Oh, I tell you, Henry, I don't know what to say. I've been up all night, half out of my mind, waiting to hear... Hold it. Henry, where are you? What is it? It's Florence. She's yelling for me. I'll have to call you back. Henry! Okay, Florence, I'm coming. Henry, I declare I could shout my lungs out and be dying and I couldn't get you to help. I'm here, Florence. What is it? Open the door and come in. Oh, come come right over here to the end of the bathtub. What's wrong? I have this terrible cramp in my foot. Oh, it's killing me. Massage it quick, please. Like that? Not the left one. You fool the right. That's it. Oh, grab it and rub. Oh, be careful, idiot. Don't pull it towards you. You almost had my head underwater. You want to drown me? Suddenly, after all the trial and error, the hedging and the fudging, there it was. All I had to do was grab both feet, pull and lift up, and Florence was helpless and gone. Murder could never be made more simple. The moment of truth at last. Does Henry have the courage to go through with it? And if he does... Can Sherry and he get away with larceny and murder? And having broken the Sixth and Eighth Commandments, will the Seventh be worth it all? Those are questions to be answered shortly when I return with Act Three. I don't suppose you'd ever want to try it. But in case you do, if your bathtub has an open end, coax any obliging friend to lie in it. Seize him or her by the ankles. Repeat Henry's actions, and they are helpless. Even if they are not obliging, and no matter how strong they are. If there's water in the tub, of course, they would drown. 
that would be surely up to you, as it is this moment up to Henry. How long I stood there frozen, unable to move, scarcely able to breathe, after I took the action, I'll never know. I suppose Florence must have thrashed and twisted. There must have been a sound of choking and bubbling as her head stayed beneath the water. I'll never know. I don't remember. All I do remember is what brought me out of my trance. Who, 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 who's that? Uh, doorbell. Uh, uh, who? Must be Sherry. Yeah, Sherry, you gotta answer. <laughs> Hey there. Are you Mr. Green? Why, uh, yes, uh, I am. Sal Basso here. Okay to move on in? I beg your pardon? Well, didn't the missus tell you about me? Why, I, I don't, uh, who... I'm your new tenant. Short term, you know? Just while you're off on a cruise. And that's my family out there in a the wagon. My wife rented you our house? Yeah. For the three weeks till our house is being painted. Just got the painter started today. Hey, wait a minute. Nothing wrong, huh? I mean, I paid an advance. Mr. Basso. Basso. Yes, uh, Basso. You're sure that... Well, just let me talk to your wife a minute. We can get it all straightened out. There's, there's no need for that. It's just Well, I that... wouldn't want to have to kick up no fuss, you know? I mean, I got the painter started. My whole family and clothes moved out. I mean, I wouldn't want to drag no lawyer or, or like that into this, but... Oh, uh, no, no, there's, there's no question of that. I'm, I'm sure if my wife, uh, as a matter of fact, I, I, I do recall she said she had something to tell me. You see, I got the receipt right here. That the missus' handwriting? Uh, that, uh, yes, that's Florence's handwriting, all right. It, it's just we've been a little delayed and... Getting out of the house, and if you could give me a, 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 a couple of hours... Oh, sure. Would... I am a bit early. Hey, I'll tell you what. There's a horror film in the shopping center movie house. Now, I'll take the family there and give them a thrill and come back uh, in, say, uh, a couple hours, okay? And tell the missus to have a good time on that cruise. And she shouldn't fall overboard or get drowned or nothing like that. <laughs> Hello. Henry. Oh, I thought you'd never call. Listen, baby, I'm all packed. I'll hop in a cab and come to your house. You better be ready with the bags and money, and we'll leave for the airport in the first plane. What? Why not? She what? Rented the house? Well, so what's the difference? Why can't... All right, Henry. All right, all right, don't get excited, yeah. Not on the phone. I'll be right over. I won't. We'll figure out something. After I hung up the phone, I went upstairs. There was something I had to do for Florence before Sherry got there. She was heavier than I thought, and it took me some time to dry her and get her dressed. It helped since she had all her traveling clothes lying on the bed. By the time I had her propped up... In the slipper chair, I was soaking wet and shaking all over. By that time, I knew what I had to do. I opened the door to the basement, turned on the light, and went downstairs. Over in the back corner was what I was looking for, an old wardrobe trunk that used to belong to Florence's father. It was covered with dust and mildew, but I wiped it off with a rag and dragged it across the cellar and up the steps. I can't. She's so heavy. Just a few steps more. That's it. Now we can get her in the trunk. I still think we should have cut and run. Easy now. Get her so she's sitting on the stool inside. We wouldn't have had time to, to, to get away. The Basso's six or seven kids, they'd have been all over this house. Nowhere to hide, Florence. That's it. Now, to get it closed. I'll hold. You push. There. Henry. 
Are you sorry? I... I don't know. I'm numb. I'll try to make up to you for it. I did it for you. The crazy things a man can do. Well, at least you're, you're free. Mm. No, 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 not, not yet. Florence may be dead, but we still haven't gotten rid of her. Oh, I wish I... Yeah, yeah, so do I. Just look at me. I'm an absolute frump. Well, Florence was a bit bigger than you. A bit? If I had a twin, she'd fit in here, too. I can't go out like this. Yes, this'll cover you up. What is it? A raincoat. We're in luck. It started to rain. You can pull the hood over your head, and you look just like Florence. Thanks a lot. Do we have to go through all this, Henry? The neighbors might be looking out, and, and someone has got to get on that boat with me. They've got to think that Florence came aboard so she can fall overboard tonight. Uh-huh, and then I sneak off in my own clothes before the ship sails. I wish I could have you with me, but, but I can't. Oh, that's all right, Henry. I'll try to bear up. There were just too many other things to think of just then. The first, getting a cab. The second, getting it loaded and away before Mr. Basso and his family returned from the horror movie. I envied him. He was just watching one. I was living it. Okay, Mac. All ready. Lift her, eh? Easy, easy. Tr try to keep our upright. Who? They are the trunk. Oh, what's the diff? You got a body in there? A what? <laughs> I'm just giving you a rip. Feels heavy enough for one. That suit you? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Fine, fine. Ah, you know, you got to be some kind of a nut to think you're going to get some old trunk like that on any of today's cabs. Them trucks went out with Jimmy Walker. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> lucky you were nice enough to help out. For 50 green ones, Mac, remember? Oh, oh, sure. Here. <laughs> okay, climb in. Uh, I, I, I just I have to make sure my wife will follow in the taxi. Well, I'm sorry, ain't got no room in the truck for three. I'll be right back. I ain't going nowhere without you. Well, we're all set, Sherry. You trail us to the pier. Here, I'll take the suitcase. It's all right. Might as well leave it with me. Goodbye, Henry. Well, goodbye for now. Anyway. Jouncing along in that miserable little pickup truck, that last goodbye seemed somehow so final. Could Sherry possibly... But I put that out of my mind as I told myself that everything was working out for the best. Just a few more hours and we'd be home free. What, what, what's the holdup? Search me. This is the line for the pier. Hey, you want I should go find out why it's jammed up? Nothing moving? No, I, uh... Hey, wait a minute. Here's a cop coming along your side. Officer? Officer? All right. Knock off the horns. Yeah, mister. I, I'm, I'm trying to make a cruise ship that's sailing in about a half hour. That's I... fine, citizen. Then you're right where you belong. Just stay in line. But why? What's what's wrong? Nothing for you to worry about, I'm sure. Just some nut phoned in a bomb scare. Now, we got to search all baggage going aboard. You want to really help out? You can. Open up that trunk you got so the bomb squad can check you out. But but I I, I can open that trunk. My my wife has the keys. Okay. So where's your wife? Was, was she, uh, well, she's she, uh, in a taxi right behind her. There wasn't room for her. What taxi? Oh, I'll be a son of a gun. That one just pulled out making a U-turn. Stop her. Stop uh, her. Hold it, mister. What's going hey, on Hey, grab little Trump officer. I should have known he was off his trolley right no, from the beginning. No, no, Take no. Take it easy, mister. You, you ain't going out of here. I bet there's a bomb in that trunk. A bomb? Yeah. There, there, is, there isn't any bomb. Let me go. Sherry, Sherry. Sherry? Sherry? Henry. Henry, wake up. What? Well, where? Oh. Florence. Where am I? Oh, I'm not surprised you don't know. Stumbling in drunk last night and waking up the first day of your vacation still calling for a drink. A drink? Well, you're not getting any. I hope you have a hangover big enough to make yourself properly ashamed of. Now, you get up out of bed and pull yourself together. Oh, yes, Florence. Oh, my head. <sighs> Oh, ouch. Oh, what's that? Your suitcase. Right where you insisted on putting it last night, right next to the bed. 
You didn't open it. I did after you fell in the door with it when you brought it home. And I packed it for you. Now, you'll be on your feet and ready to go by the time I'm out of my bath. My mind was reeling and splitting in two at the same time. I kneeled on the floor and opened the suitcase. It contained nothing but clothes. No money, just clothes. With a shaking hand, one ear on the rushing bath water, and an eye on the bathroom door, I dialed Cherry's number. Yes? Cherry? Who's this? Henry. Henry who? Henry Green. Oh, oh hello, Mr. Green. I was going to call you a little later. I should think so. What happened yesterday? Oh, I wouldn't worry too much about anything. You were kind of cute, really, when you left the party, if a bit wobbly. Party? What party? Well, the party that shut. I mean, Mr. Mercer gave when you were named vice president. I was named vice president? You don't remember much, do you? You even went off with a vault key you were supposed to give to Mr. Schaefer. I have to arrange for you to get it to him today before you leave on the cruise. Sherry, I, I mean, uh, Miss Woods, did did we have lunch together yesterday? Why, no. I didn't have three martinis with you? Well, not at lunch. At the party. Oh, well, I don't know how many you had, but you were pretty looped. I called you home last night, and your wife said you'd gone straight to bed without any dinner. So... It was all a dream. What did you say? N- 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 nothing, Sherry. I just wish I'd been able to uh, kiss you goodbye. I sit here hunched like a mouse, remembering the dream and facing the reality. And I wonder which is the real nightmare. I suppose I should be grateful it was only a dream. But on the other hand... Henry! Henry! Come in here right away. I have a cramp in my foot. I need you. Henry Green, paper tiger, as it turns out. Grand larceneer, first degree murderer, rapacious adulterer, thirsting after a young woman's flesh, but all and only in the mind. And surely to have to go on living with someone like Florence is punishment enough to fit the crime. I'll be back shortly. The wish is father to the thought. The thought is father to the deed. Henry Green only got two-thirds of the way along that path. Even in dreams, he never managed to break the seventh commandment. Poor Henry. But, as I said in the beginning, this was the story of a natural-born loser. Our cast included Jack Guilford, Marion Haley, Bryna Rayburn, Dan Ocko, Ian Martin. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.